call the meeting to order at 7.03. Um, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? And we'll move to the um, consent agenda to approve the minutes of Tuesday, June 20th. Do I have a motion? August. Do I give you an old agenda? Oh, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> You just do last month's meeting. I had it still left in. So All moved right. for the August. Minutes. Yeah, okay. August 15th. Yes. Minutes of August 15th. Okay. I didn't give you a second. The wrong packet, did I? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Chris was the second. Who was the first? Nancy. I'm sorry? Nancy. Who was the first on that motion? Nancy was the first. Chris okay, was the second. Thank you. All right. Um, then we're on to public comment correspondence. Is there any public comment at this time? Hi, Peggy. Okay. Do we have any board comment? So I, I had um, just wanted to piggyback on what Andrew was saying last time with the, um, as a parent, I guess as a board member and a parent, but it was the registration portions of it was far better, especially if you have multiple kiddos in school. Yeah. Um, that part of it was very seamless. I think the only piece that maybe we can look at <clears throat> as we continue to refine this is there now seems to be a lot of redundancy. So the paperwork's all filled out, but we're still trying to figure out who's filled the paperwork out, who hasn't, so that we can get privileges like computers or or every permission slip that comes home says, well, we want your medical information that the school already has, you know? So there's a lot of redundancy still in that process that maybe we can refine some, because on the, Registration portion, it, it talked about field trips, and then every field trip that comes back, you get to fill the field trip thing out, flip it over, and put all your medical information back on there again. And just think maybe there would be a. You're getting that still this year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Not elementary. So I'm just, it, and that comes from both schools. So it's, you know, just, I think we've made good strides, and, and maybe that's the next step of the refinement is to look at, you know, how do we pull that data of what parents have submitted the slips and which ones haven't so that the kids can get their whatever laptops or whatever it might be so that we can get going for the year um, as well as maybe some of these redundant pieces that keep coming back but um, but the registration piece of it must take me like five minutes for both my girls this year it was okay. pretty fast once you filled it out once and you just kind of copied it and added yeah. the second one and changed one or two things and boom you're done you know so it was really nice um the only other thought I had on that topic was whether it would make sense to include some sort of questions on the regular survey that everybody has to ask that would, I don't know if it's possible, but you know, like give us some idea of household income or something so that you could then know who to target for those free and reduced lunch forms. Since I know that we're always kind of pushing to increase the the return rate on those, like if there was some way to incorporate that into the thing that everybody fills out kind of as an optional thing, you know, to then know like what percentage of people are saying that they're in this income bracket or something and then what percentage are we actually getting back? Mm -hmm. It's just a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, any other board comment? Then we'll move on to the celebration of learning. So the cel yeah, and Ben won't be here tonight, so the celebration is just sort of an introduction to Pathways, and Pathways has increased tremendously this year. So this is kind of an introduction video to sort of get kids interested. It's not a full video on that, but um, yeah. I also think it's a good marketing tool. Actually, it's a celebration of learning, but we had this playing at our booth at the fairgrounds to give folks a sense of what could be options at our high school and what I think could be a thing that's really that we're getting ahead of some of our <clears throat> regional competition on. I thought that creating my own learning would be a better experience and be more tailored to what I wanted to learn. 
Community-based learning brings together our students and members of the community to engage in experiential learning, training, and career opportunities in Vermont and beyond. These experiences can allow students to demonstrate mastery of core or elective proficiencies aligned with their personal interests. In independent study, students co-create individual courses with teachers and staff based on their own interests and needs. In this work, they demonstrate proficiencies to satisfy graduation requirements and meet personal and school goals. Through independent study, students can explore any subject. White River Valley High School students can take a wide range of core and elective courses online. These courses, which are both topical and traditional, are taught online by licensed Vermont teachers and supported by teachers at White River Valley High School. Students often engage in learning opportunities outside the school on their own or with other organizations. We honor these activities and we build experiences with students. Through these self-contained experiences, students can explore and demonstrate mastery of academic proficiencies. We then combine these experiences to satisfy school requirements and help students meet their personal goals. I learned so much more than just history. Self-confidence, self-advocacy, um, as well as just the knowledge base that you're building at a pace that you're comfortable with. All of this requires self-direction and WRVHS staff are here to help. Time will be provided during the school day for you to engage in flexible pathways. Each day, Tuesday to Friday, we have set aside a pathways period right after lunch. During this time, with support from staff, students will exercise their curiosity and creativity to explore their own interests. We hope this results in greater engagement and growth as demonstrated in student-led conferences and portfolio. We've been talking about time during the day and connections to school, but we need to remember learning happens everywhere. Flexible pathways are about strengthening those connections and honoring what we do outside the building as well as in the classroom. It goes so far beyond just normal classroom settings um, because normal classroom setting doesn't work for everyone. What are you thinking about now? What do you want to do? What have you always wanted to learn or do? Come see us. We're here to find those connections to your interests. Email us or come on by to room B6. Ben Boyington, Flexible Pathways. Jeff Clayton, Community-Based Learning. I think some of the most like notable things that I learned this year, like outside of like school, like were like self-control, dependability, and grit. Finally, don't forget to follow us on social media. Okay. I thought that creating my own. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, Ben shared that uh, a couple weeks ago. I was like, this is perfect for um, marketing materials, both internally to get our students to know what options they have, but also um, externally to give prospective students an idea what opportunities could be here for them so it's interesting when you talk to students too proud. about like uh, what do you what, what's your passion what do you like and they, they just don't know so you know it's, it's funny how like you kind of got to talk to them a little bit and the next thing you know you find something and Ben's really good at pulling that out and the next thing you know they're studying about it and getting credit so it's really exciting right and, and I know it's early in the season but what, you know, what do we think our participation rate is or will be in in the flexible pathway Piece. I, I would say 80% of our student body will be in some, involved with some sort of flexible pathway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are some of the numbers in yeah. the principal's report. Right. Under the high school section. And it's early still, but I think that's quadrupled what it was last year already mm -hmm. because of this block four, period four pathways. And the students who aren't doing a pathways at that time are using it for just general enrichment. Right? Yeah, and we're trying to get them. Um, we have other groups like math and English that are working with kids to support yeah. them as well. And then we have the dream program and driver's ed going on during that period as well. So, okay. Yeah. Yep. My daughter's in dream. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. 
All right, superintendent report. Uh, so you have my report in hand. Um, I uh, got to enjoy my Saturday night at the fair with Nancy, which was a great time uh, at the table that we had. Um, so it, it's the first year that we've had an SU table at the fair, and um, you know I think we learned some things that we'll add to it for next year um, in regards to just try to have it be more dual engaging. Um, I think it was easier for me because I know a lot of folks in our communities, so it's easy. it was easy for me to kind of start a conversation. I was a little bit concerned about um, some of our new administrators or things that that would be more difficult. So just how do we give a, a hook to get folks to come to the booth? So we've talked about some things like maybe spinning a wheel and doing some type of a, um, question that's local about the SU where they could guess and then win a, a prize or something like that just to make it a little more engaging that way. Um, but I would say in general, I heard a lot of uh, folks that were just appreciative that we were there. Um, and I really valued the uh, just the intimate conversations around what folks felt like was going good um, across the SU, what things they'd like us to focus on. You know, I think one of the things we continue to struggle with as an organization is I think we are improving our outreach to the school community meaning like if you have students with us, right? Like we have social media, we have Blackboard, we have newsletters, we have SU websites and school websites that are updated on a regular basis. I still think an area that we struggle with is like how do we reach our constituents that aren't currently connected with the school? Um, I think this was a good mode to try to start to do that. But I think, you know, in general, we've been hosting things at our schools to try to connect with the community. I think we need to look at more opportunities when there's events happening in the community mm -hmm. that we go there. And um, I think I only saw two other educational identities that were there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, I guess, for one, it took me forever to find it. Um, but once I found where you guys were at. Um, but I got wondering, like, maybe for next year, of course, it's always a gamble, but if you notice i can't even remember the name of it but there was like a small school that was just outside but had like an easy up but their name was on the easy up type deal mm -hmm. and i think they probably got more foot traffic because they were outside a lot of people don't go inside the building as much mm -hmm. so i didn't know if maybe for next year that that might be something to look into if mm -hmm. can we get a wildcat easy up you know mm -hmm. and maybe take the gamble of being on the outside and not the inside um, mm -hmm. type deal because it I know it took a while to find it, mm -hmm. but um, might get a little more. I think we the one traffic. lucky thing we had going for us is that we were next to the fudge. <laughs> well, and, and, yeah. and, and then everybody the, goes yeah. to the fudge. Yeah. 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 But on the other side, yeah. they, were, they were giving out these little bags, and they were pigs, pig bags with the little ears on the side. And I'm telling you, every kid was looking for that, and they had to come by our booth to get to them. Mm. So yeah. That's oh, good. I didn't see the pig bag. I think they were done. I it got was a that booth next to us. <laughs> But it was good to see it, and it, it, what, there really wasn't too many educational identities there, so I thought that 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 was well. Well, every kid that had a Thetford shirt on got a White River Valley pen or pencil, just saying. <laughs> well, you, well, you got to think of how many different identities oh, are there, there right? I mean, there's schools, yeah. a dozen or more different schools that come there for that fair, so. Uh, other things just wanted to highlight. Um, is that Michaela Martin's gonna, she's kind of spearheading at the SU this idea of a portrait of a graduate. We are gonna be looking for board members that are interested in doing that work. Um, so if you're interested, if you could just, uh, feel free to reach out to me if that's easier for you, or just mmartin at wrvsu.org. We're gonna have community members uh, engaging in that. Students are getting trained up to then hold conversations on this in their local communities. Uh, and the idea is that the students will be trained to help facilitate those conversations so that we're empowering student voice to do that work. Um, that's an ongoing year-long activity. And then at the full board meeting next week, I'm really excited, is that we'll, st we'll start to give a preview for the uh, full board, our rollout of our revisions to our curricular documents to make them um, what I hope folks feel is much more easy to understand as um, for all constituents, meaning that they're not just internal documents, that they're public facing, and that folks have a much better understanding of what we want our kids to know, understand, and do throughout the grade levels. Teachers have put in a lot of work around that with that throughout the la last year. Um, I'm, I'm happy with how that's, that's looking. 
Um, and we're pretty close to being completed in every content area. There's a couple content areas that are a little bit behind. Uh, and just to remind folks, the Agency of Education supported us with that work. Um, they've had members of their team right out in the field working with our teams of educators uh, and helping facilitate that. So that was great to get that support from them. Uh, and then I'll take any questions folks may have. Okay. If nobody has anything for Jamie, we'll move on to the principal's report. Happy to start. I think that uh, our whole report really highlights a great start to the school year. Uh, we have been in elementary doing a lot of front loading with social emotional and what our agreements are. Uh, we launched, been using through um, the SU in service, the um, um, inner explore mindfulness so uh, all of our elementary classes are working on having some quiet mindfulness moments which we're hopeful will help help them uh, in the long run have some more resiliency skills uh, and we are in morning meeting in addition to the, our responsive classroom added in positivity project which really highlights a different character strength each week this week we're working on curiosity and then we're connecting that to our students of the week so um, students of the week get nomina nominated for showing that character strength which is a little bit different than what we were doing previously uh, in addition to that there's been a lot of training going on and just uh, our elementary teachers are getting trained up in some new assessments which we're very excited about uh, and we started our first first half day uh, and uh, took some time to just connect about um, newsletters and just just trying to level the playing field with so many new teachers, which is really lovely and wonderful, but bring them all in. Uh, and our next uh, half, half day for SU, we're excited to be doing PLCs and grade elect groups. And then finally, we had a great ice cream social and we're getting ready to open up for open house. We're gonna also have um, uh, flu clinic as well at the open house uh, and so yeah it's been a great start and we're ready to keep on rolling um, Ed did you have a comment or question for yeah I, I did um, I was unable to get the principal's report in oh. off the, the Google Docs um, if, if I'm looking at it now if we could go back up uh, but, but right after the other section that said middle school there was some mention of uh, the words, I'm sorry, the, the word suicide education appeared somewhere or something, or, or their son that first and yeah, so at the SU in service, we heard from Sue Hoppner, and so her son um, lost his life due to suicide, and so her family's foundation one spoke at the SU uh, in service, but also they are funding it for all schools in Vermont to use this mindfulness um, moment. So definitely ask your kids about it. I think a lot of teachers are using it like after recess as like a quiet time to like bring ourselves back down and uh, it's really like shows uh, outside basically like a, a still picture on the screen and um, leads kids through some either breath work or just um, just an opportunity to like slow down their bodies. And, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I didn't get a chance to pre-read that. And yeah. I was scrolling by, I saw it. Yep. And it, I, I, it caught my eye. I just wanted to know yeah. more about it. It was Thanks. a lo lovely gift that their family is giving to all Vermont schools. And you can click and do it yourself. <laughs> Ready for middle school? Sure. I would certainly like to echo, it has been a wonderful start to a school year um, for a lot of reasons chief among them a great staff and a really good group of students um, that's the obvious that's a part you know but we're really seeing the dividends of the work that went into the summer work between uh, teachers between interventionists aligning their various lessons so that there's a connection between various places um, various content areas and that's progressed throughout the school year as well one of the um, pieces of my staff meeting this afternoon focused on learning from each other. So we had two of their colleagues presenting to them about how to incorporate uh, ways to think about writing, how to sharpen writing skills across all of the content areas uh, with some commitment to, well, let's try some of these techniques. Uh, all 
paralleling various things that we're seeing in the elementary school, some wonderful projects where students are being guided towards kind of a scientific approach to thinking, mm -hmm. data inquiry for us adults, but asking good questions, forming hypotheses, finding evidence, and we're seeing that in how the writing is being brought from ELA to science. Um, kind of exciting work going forward to see this kind of collaboration among the teammates. I do want to highlight something that's not in here that kind of sews together some of the things uh, my superintendent said. I had the opportunity to work the, uh, the booth at the fair on Sunday. Relatively slow start to the morning. Gave plenty of opportunity for those intimate conversations. Uh, with my colleague Dan Rivers, uh, we had a very long, probably 15 minute conversation with two legislators. And I want to highlight something that's a positive of this community in this school district, this SU. They came, they saw who we were, they, they were engaging with us as educators and they had a lot of questions, but they started with, okay, what's going wrong? What do we need to know? What do we need to advocate for? They were expecting kind of a deficit mindset. And right in the table in front of us are two beautiful examples of where this district is going. We were able to highlight the portrait of a graduate and talk about how that leads to ties with community agencies, with community businesses to produce that citizen of the future. And we were also able to talk about the pathways. The video you just saw was a conversation starter with them as well. Uh, it feels like we're actually achieving things that were talked about in the legislature a decade ago. So it was a very positive experience. And I think all else aside, you should be proud of the work that has been done that led to that moment and that conversation. The last thing I would highlight is um, one of the positive starts of the school year has been an all hands on deck approach to again defining what are expected um, behaviors what are the the non-negotiables language that can't be used how do we interact with each other across a wide variety of settings and routines um, we're using the advisory system that's built into our schedule i think to uh, greater and greater effect and this friday we start uh, a curriculum that will last for the entire year called character strong that gives intention behind the advisory model. So once a week, we'll be doing a lesson that will carry throughout the uh, following week. Uh, and again, that will last throughout the entire school year. I look forward to updating you on some of the results of that. Thank you. And at the high school, we talked a little bit already about highlighting pathways. Um, Number two, our enrollment is up from 190 last year to 215, so 25 new students in our building, which is really exciting. Um, we had we had the first community conversations hosted here. What a great dinner night out! We had over 25 people there, so I thought Dana Decker did an amazing job. Um, very educational. It was a good night. And then lastly, is this weekend is homecoming. We have our homecoming dance on Friday and games on Saturday. Any questions or comments for the principals? Go ahead. Ed. Uh, I, I, I do have one. Is there a, I don't want to say issue, is, is there a difference in the accessibility of the library rules for, for the different levels of school over at the, the Royalton campus now? There was a, a, a loose comment that I picked up on, on social media that it said, the high school kids can't get in while the, the younger kids are in or, or something to that effect but uh, then it seemed to be dropped but I didn't know if, if we were understaffed in the library or not I just wanted to ask about that no issue's so, been brought to me about it so so I think where the issue is coming from is that uh, our librarian it, it's a pre-k through uh, Five, as you know, and then nine through twelve. So, a lot of the classes for elementary are in this library, and so it's hard for our high school students to come in. Um, Stacy Rupp has done a great job, though, of scheduling high school time, and teachers are taking advantage of that. So, I think we're working that out. It's kind of new for all of, all of us because she's a new teacher. So, I think there might have been some issues in the beginning that we've worked. I, I, it 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 was an anonymous comment on so a social media site. And that could mean some hurt feelings, and it's, it could have been somebody taking it personal because they got asked to leave for something. Or, but I wanted to know if there was, in fact, uh, if we needed maybe another paraprofessional, 
or more people to, to, to help more kids. That's all I really was interested in. Thanks, though. So with the... Um, oh, Andrew touched base on the Inner Explorer um, piece. Is that... Is, is that just in the elementary only, or is no. that something that's going to be done in it's middle a, school as well as high school? Or? It's available to anybody who wants to utilize that. I mean, I think that's a pretty valuable tool. I mean, it, at least my experience has been the more mental health challenges have been with my early teenage daughters, you know, in that middle school. We'll pick on middle school because <laughs> it's the melting it's pot. It's a, but it's a um, tumultuous time <clears throat> to be a person. So is there, is there a... Um, is there a plan to offer similar tools in middle school or high school that kind of what Andrew's looking at right now in the elementary school? There is certainly the intention to offer that in terms of the plan. Um, I'm coming to understand the kind of work that's been done already and what we're engaged with, like a Claire Martin Center for um, like trauma-informed practices. I talked uh, today, you mentioned the uh, mental health first aid. So there's every intention to do that. Um, to me, plan means I can tell you exactly when that's starting. We're not at that point yet. But we recognize it's a need, and we know we have some resources to draw upon. Yeah, and I, I just see that as, you know, completely, you know, you can't put a number to something like that. And, and mm -hmm. doing it right out of the gate while it's fresh, it's a new slate for the year. And, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of goes along with what you said, you know, starting to work on behavior practices and if you can roll the mental health piece into it about mm -hmm. bullying or harassment at the same time I think that would work really well and yeah. so definitely would encourage more of it if we, mm -hmm. we can do more Don't of it or, or maybe one doesn't fit all maybe we have to find multiple tools for each age group to mm -hmm. use but yeah this does this program does go pre-k right up through 12 yeah I think that'd be great I think it goes right up to adult. It does. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, principals. Um, Tara. All right, you all have my report, which outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of September. Uh, one thing I want to point out, as you know, we have new auditors this year. That relationship is going very well, but you have homework. Andrew, you have homework. Oh, boy. And then one other board member. I would recommend Rodney because you're the one that signs the warrants, but anyone else can do it. And what it is, is just a fraud questionnaire that the auditors want you to complete and then send in to them, and I don't actually see it. So I will leave it up to you if you want to do it or whoever wants to volunteer. Oh, okay. It's the same one as yours. Okay. I, think you could I guess I can do it. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's only like you know, 10 questions. <laughs> And then if there is questions on there that you that don't apply, you can write not applicable or doesn't apply to us. Oh, okay. And then Ray, if you could put up the fiscal year 23 year end projections, please. So on the first page is our expenditure budget. I've outlined the areas of overspending, which we've seen throughout last year, and then the areas of savings. So overall, at the projected close of the fiscal year, you're looking at an expenditure surplus of $554,362. If there's any questions on that, otherwise we can refer to the revenue I side. If I could just jump in, Tara. I just want to emphasize to the board that a big chunk of that remains to be the fact that we're leveraging ESSER yep. to cover some of your interventionist salaries that we're allowed to do. And professional development and contracted services. So those are your big areas of savings. So a lot of that was a result of ESSER offsets. With the whole idea being that then we could look to leverage some of that to put away like we have been to then be able to do capital improvements that we want to do on the buildings. Just every time I can say that so yeah. folks know, I think it's good. And, and the going forward, we're not going to be seeing these. No, that, that's what I, I just want to put out there. Like, that's going away at the end of uh, this coming summer. Yeah. So if the enrollment figures I mean, do stand we know up, then that's certainly helping. Yeah. <laughs> Roundabout, what, what percentage of this is being covered under S here? I mean, if 
I would say a big chunk of it. What would you Over say? Over 50% of your budgeted salaries and benefits for your interventionist are being covered by ESSA funds. I would say most of those salary yeah. and benefit offsets. Right, but like what? So out of what the percentage of the surplus? Like I would say 80. Yes. Yeah. Easy. Yes, so. because your areas of surplus or your areas of savings on the budget are the yeah. areas that we are utilizing ESSER funds to pay for those expenses. So if we didn't have the salary ESSER funds, we're probably looking at more of a $100,000 yeah. surplus. Yeah. Rather yes. than, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, based upon some of the overspent items, or is there any concerns in the budget that we are in currently with any of those Usually pieces? Usually, the, the biggest thing that we see is because obviously, when we're building budgets, we may not necessarily know who you're bringing in as new teachers in the next fiscal year. So mm -hmm. we always usually see an overage on the new teacher health assessment because mm -hmm. any teacher that you bring in that's new to the licensing pool, we have to pay that new teacher assessment on for the, the remainder that they're employed by us. So that normally we do see. Um, in fiscal year 24, I did build in a small cushion for some additional new staff. But that's definitely something when we start working on the budget and we look at your actuals versus what we're going to budget for 25, we would take that into consideration based on how many new hires you have this year on what we need to put there. Um, electricity and oil, a lot of that's going to be addressed through our energy efficiency with EEI and the projects that are happening there. We couldn't project that fuel oil was going to go up to $4 a yeah. gallon mm -hmm. when we were building budgets. So, you know, that's obviously part of our overspendage there and then trash and recycling um, again you know the, the contracted amount for our recycling um, and our trash containers went up that we weren't anticipating when we were building budgets so again when we're starting to build 25 budget over the next two months we'll start to also um, increase those in 25 to help offset some of those so there so there is a potential of those overages carrying into the current budget then we could potentially, right. but you'll see here in Royalton, but because in Bethel we're not going to have oil, mm -hmm. you know, where we already built in those savings there, yeah. so we may not see the same scale. Okay. Yeah. And oil prices are lower than what we budgeted, so. Okay. What we locked in on. So on the revenue side, we had um, $51,000 additional revenue for tuition. We had, um, just I'm gonna highlight the big ones here. We had an additional 49,000 on interest income. And as you recall, when we put our tax anticipation notes in place, if we don't have to pull down the money from the tax anticipation notes, that collects interest. So that is where that interest additional revenue is coming from because we did have um, cash flow we weren't we didn't have to pull down our can as much so we were able to make some more revenue there so overall on the revenue side we are eighty eight thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars to the good on the expenditure five hundred fifty four three sixty two so the current projection for the fiscal year twenty three surplus is six hundred forty three thousand nine dollars And then down below is, as of the 622 audit, uh, the fund balances, and then what we transferred, uh, that 700000 in your article this year. And then budgeted versus actual, well, projected enrollment at this point? I mean, is there any... I know. I, I just barely got your list yesterday, okay. so I cannot give you a projection. Sound like we're doing good at the high school level, anyways. So, okay. Next month, yeah, yeah. we'll be able to. All right. Thanks, Tara. You're welcome. Definitely good news. All right. Uh, policy committee update. Uh, the full board's going to be uh, taking up its warrant for action uh, three policies um, next week. We've got the um, final of the the board code of ethics uh, policy. We've got the um, oh come on, Jamie, help me here, Ronnie. Yeah, I'm drawing emergency on. preparedness <laughs> <been a> <laughs> options based <laughs> emergency preparedness policy, um, and then uh, building access policy. 
uh, and they're all worn for action at the full board and then would come in front of your board next month. Um, and I think we're in a pretty good place based on all the different feedback we've received that code of ethics policies went through six drafts essentially. Um, and uh, we'll take times. it up. It seemed like the full board was in support at this point. Those and then just word. we'll go from there. Yeah, it didn't really change it much. So that's the policy committee up. The only other update I would say is that I'm excited that we've gotten to a point where the policy committee is going to be start the process to outline um, a 16-month window to review all of our policies uh, and start to make revisions. So what you will start to see is uh, possibly some policies start to come forward to you with revisions, uh, proposed revisions for the board to consider. Uh, and as we do that process, we're going to be looking at a corresponding procedure as well. Uh, so that's really the work of the policy committee, we think, moving forward here for the next year and a half. Great. Uh, facilities Task Force? Yeah, we toured the Bethel School last night. Uh, it's coming good. Most of the registers are in the school and classrooms. Uh, thermostats were in. And I think the propane furnace will be operational probably the end of next week. And the we get the Act 250 permit for the okay. wood pell, uh, for the wood chip furnace, and that's floating in the ocean somewhere right now, and it should be here soon. <laughs> so everything's pads looking poured. good. Yeah, the pads poured. The pads are poured. Um, yeah, they'll finish putting in the propane furnace and. Uh, I can't think of anything else. So lighting here, I guess, is good. And yeah, they still got the lighting to do. In Bethel. In Bethel, yeah. yeah they it's been started, yet. though. <clears throat> I don't think the lighting has. Hasn't started? Maybe if they had to do some work, but not fully. I've seen, all right. No, uh, not fully. But. Um, not like they're there every day. No. Um, and we also talked way. about at the task force uh, really focusing over the upcoming months as we're talking in budget season, what our focus is for next uh, year. So know that the board, we're going to be looking to have them come forward with some presentation for the full board Great. to comment um, in regards to priorities for next summer. One of the things we talked about last night was them coming back next month with uh, Banwell, the architect that they've been working with at our, our buildings uh, around some drawings for um, improving our entryways at both campuses, specifically the high school entryway here and at the elementary middle school in Bethel with a focus on security. <clears throat> the entry here is the one that goes out to the back parking lot. Yeah. Uh, but doesn't have anything. Right, we have no way to allow access during the day there, right? It's not lighted out there. Not yeah. Either. Or not lighted very well. Um, so is there Next one is the EI capital improvements. Yeah, sorry. Sort of the same thing. Yeah, I kind of the same thing. No, no worries. Um, anything else on that front, or did we cover it all? Uh, you know, I would say that you know the big thing is that we got the Act 250 permit. I mean, yeah, the great. worry was that could hold us up another couple more months, and the good news is we got it. So they're moving ahead, um, and everything's run. So it's really about just installation and connecting in the boiler system. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Great. All right. Um, board retreat planning. So I think we're going to postpone it from this um, Friday to sometime in next October. August. <laughs> next <laughs> August. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any time in October that would work? Could we do another Friday? Or sometime midweek if that works. But same. Do you have any uh, dates that the SU ones in looking for right October? Right? Up my board calendar. For you. Andrew, the, S it? the SU ones in October, right? It is. I think it's we decided on the twelfth. Oh, Isn't was it? it second Tuesday of the month? It's the twelfth. I was thinking twenty something. I thought that's okay. what you said. I it, could be wrong, right. Chris. Second Tuesday of the month. The tenth. The tenth. Tenth, tenth yes. for the full board. Thank and you, Ray. I mean, in general, Tuesday nights are not good <laughs> right now. Can we just go? Can we go to the full board one and get like flexible pathways credit? Or <laughs> <laughs> good thinking. 
<laughs> it's pretty good at. You know, I had never thought about trying to do it that way, but that could be an option for all of us. Yeah. It's contact hours, like, you know. I'm 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 good sometime in 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 October. Uh should we um, just send out a doodle poll or yeah, something I can like do that? that. Yeah, yep. why don't we do that? Um, now, are there certain days of the week that are better for board members? If we were to narrow in on some dates. The only day of the week that's not good for me is Mondays. Okay, so no on Mondays. I mean, we could, uh, you know, try, try to follow suit in what we did the first time with having a, you know, the Thursday of the same week as the board meeting so we could... What was Update that? any items that we want to do for an action item. Yeah, I think. You know, our next meeting's the 17th, right? So, you know, we can do it like the 19th, and then that gives us an opportunity at the next meeting if we want to um, talk about any um, retreat plans or agenda yeah. items. Or yeah, or the Friday, the 20th, would probably work too, so 19th or the 20th. Yeah. Yeah, no, that would that would be good. We could come up with an agenda in advance of the Tuesday meeting and then present that and we can comment on it. Hmm? Are both of those days good for folks right now? I think they're good for me. Right? What time would you have it? Both days are over. Uh, probably like 5 to 8 or something like that. All right, so... And both day, Thursdays and Fridays are good for you? I mean, yeah. I'll make it work is basically what it is. I mean... <laughs> we'll be late depending upon whether I have somebody to help with chores or not. Okay. As usual. <laughs> Might miss out on the brisket, though. When we When we do it, we'll just... We're going to do it. Where, where do we do it for location wise? I mean, um, the last one we did, we did at the SU office as kind of just a more intimate location. But yeah, then wh whichever day is fine because whichever I'll, I'll drive over there. It's just, you know, anything local, I'll, I'll always make a good effort. So. Okay. Um, so does nobody have a preference between the Thursday and the Friday? I guess, uh, why don't we send out a poll and, and we yep. can figure it out. Okay. Uh, and then we're on to the pros and cons of unified elementary and middle and high school campuses. I'm going to turn this over to the principals. So we, um created a survey well, actually not all of us uh, I created a survey for the elementary thinking about stakeholders this the students the teachers and families in greater community and pushed out to um, teachers and staff uh, just to give us all of their feedback on what they foresaw as potential benefits or drawbacks pros and cons uh, I know Pierre shared the same survey with his staff and then Jeff just sort of did a, a check-in at one of his staff meetings and collected some of that same information. So we have that raw information, but instead we synthesized it down to some of these um, these bullet points. Uh, I think these are like the, the things that generally had multiple people mention. So, uh, so I'm happy to read it. Oh, so the, the benefits were elementary teachers would feel less isolation in their grade levels. High school teachers could work with middle school teachers, uh, would be more easy and seamless and departments could work together. Collaboration and communication would be easier. Teachers would have opportunities to work in, with grade level peers. Increased professional expertise on at one level in the building. Potentially more services available. Having the elementary principal at campus every day was mentioned a couple of times. Efficiencies, teachers would not necessarily need to move from campus to campus. Predictability in teaching assignments for teachers. Um, Class sizes would be more balanced. This one was mentioned a thousand times. It felt like more. Uh, expanded opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer social connections. I think that was specifically associated with elementary. 
Collaboration on all levels. Events could be uh, one night for each campus. Resources would be more focused and less spread out, and library would be specific for the grade level. And then, of course, there's concerns as well, uh, and tried to capture all of those. So loss of elementary town-specific community. Uh, if removing elementary, it may impact CBL, Dream Project, uh, and the high school, and I would also say middle school and elementary interactions. Uh, busing was probably the thing that was brought up, I felt like, the most. Uh, space issues and how it would work with, for sports teams and fields and things as such. The middle school stays at the, uh, I hope I articulate this right. Uh, I think what it was saying was if not to lose the middle school concept and if, if the middle school was to move to the high school that they wouldn't want to have to be treated in a junior high fashion. I hope I articulated that right. Uh, other things were will the infrastructure fit the needs at each campus uh, and teachers that had committed to a specific campus uh, with their contract and a shift in teaching assignment location could be a challenge for their travel. Um, so I think that was, that's sort of the synthesized version of, of what we got for you. Yeah, and what, what I would offer to the board too is, is that if there's, um, this is the first time we're really having this discussion, the desire to continue this discussion, we're more than happy to share out all the feedback. It just didn't feel like this would be the place to share all that, right? Um, and so what I, you know, what I think that the board needs to do is, is, you know, have some discussion about is, is this something that they even want to pursue, right? Um, think about uh, what other data they need. Um, and then what I would recommend to the board is if it was something they wanted to pursue, that it would make a ton of sense to create a task force that had community members on it, students on it, teachers on it, um, some board members on it, that we would look to have uh, an outside person possibly facilitate that conversation um, and really study it um, and gather community feedback about it uh, with the notion being that then that task force would bring the board some type of recommendation for the board to consider. Um, and then the board could decide whether or not they wanted to pursue that recommendation. I mean, that is; those are all the steps I would advise the board to consider if this is something they, if this is a topic they wanted to continue to consider. Am I making sense? Like, I think this sure. is just day one, and then you got to decide: is it something you wanted to continue to discuss? Do you need like more time to chew it? And then, if you were to do it, I really think you need to take the step of like a study task force that really looks into the pros um, or the you know concerns, what the concerns would be for each community, chew on all that, and then that group would then make a recommendation to the board uh, to consider. That's That would be my advice. Okay. With a reminder, just to go back to your articles of agreement though, at the end of the day, if you were to close an elementary school on either campus, the way the articles of agreement are written, is that results that requires a super majority of the board supporting that, and then it goes back to that town, and all the constituents of that town would take a vote, um, and it's that town that would make that decision. Right. I mean, I guess my, I, I don't really have a opinion one way or another if we leave it or do something different or I, I just kind of see this as kind of more of an exercise like like we were talking about tonight of policy revisions and things like that I think you know we wouldn't be really doing our due diligence if we weren't at least constantly looking at uh, our structure in you know if the, in this case it's more of a physical structure but um, I, I think it would be I think it would be good to at least keep the discussion moving forward with it um and and i would probably be um kind of curious as to see what what more i think there's probably a lot more benefits that aren't listed here you know um you know different pathways or things that can be offered between the middle school and the high school that would look better um or, or you know all the elementary under one umbrella what that looks like and um it doesn't hurt to maybe explore the community to see, um, you know, we, I think as Andrew had stated, we kind of know what the 
communities were thinking six years ago, but are they still thinking the same way today, or has it changed? Or um, so I, I guess I would be pro at least just going through the study portions of it to get more information and and uh, you know at that point just coming back to the board and looking at everything. Yeah, I I am not really in favor of doing this mostly because you know, I think that there was a lot of concern at the time of the merger that you know this would be a step towards like there was a lot of pushback again like I think if the thought was then that that it was a step towards then there'd be another step towards the elementary school getting taken away from one community or you know not being in both communities that we never would have passed it then so you know I certainly wasn't it wasn't like a Trojan horse to then try and do more consolidation later you know and I do feel like one of the things we heard a lot during the process was that each community needed to have an elementary school. And so, I mean, maybe things have changed, but I don't, my feeling is that they probably haven't because I think most families, you know, want their elementary schools as local as possible. And um, so I'm guessing there isn't much support for this in the broader community. And, um, so I'm not sure that I would want to take the, you know, A, stir up this when, you know, it, it was a, a big lift kind of getting the consolidation we did done. And I don't, you know, and I think that that was needed at the time. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think we need to stir things back up with this kind of thing when I don't think that there's much likelihood of there being support in each community for it. Um, so, I don't know, that's my view on it. I, I can see how there would be benefits, but I do think, you know, there is something to having your elementary kids in your community. And... Um, you know, if if we were at a point, you know, like one of the reasons why we um, did the consolidation in the first place was, you know, it did feel like we were getting to the point where with enrollment declines that we had gotten to the point where, you know, there were issues with trying to serve the population size that we were serving. And if we, you know, felt that that was the case with the elementary school where we'd gotten to the point where the, you know, population size was too small that we couldn't adequately serve them, then I think that that would be a consideration. But I'm not, I don't know, I don't feel like we're there right now. You know, maybe there would be some benefits to merging, but I don't think, like, we can, yeah. So that, those are my thoughts. I totally agree with you. Okay. <laughs> Just the, the few people that have spoken to me about that they've gotten wind of this happening and saying, are they really going to try to do away with our elementary school? People from Royalton have, have chatted me up on this a bit. And, yeah, I think there's huge resistance to that. Um, and as a middle school teacher for 30 years, I am really opposed to bringing the middle school into the high school because that's the kiss of death. And especially since we have sixth graders in our middle school, I think that could make it even more difficult um, because it's really hard to maintain that middle school focus when you're connected with a high school and you're sharing staff with a high school because the lines get crossed. Um, and the scheduling and just trying to keep them separate is really difficult. Um, so, 
Maggie? Well, good. I'm unmuted for, for once in a while. Um, I would be certainly supportive of studying it. I've been through a merger type of thing before when we merged elementary, five different elementary schools into one larger school. And yes, there was a lot of opposition, exactly what I'm sort of here, or a lot of conversation, exactly what I'm hearing here. We want to keep them close to us. A lot of people didn't want to give up their neighborhood schools. And it was kind of interesting. You could go to a neighborhood school and in their gym, you could touch the ceiling. The library was a closet. Um, all these different things that weren't available because the schools were small, which is nice to have small schools. But by merging, they got a library. They got technical things. They got a decent gym. Um, and I see a lot of benefits to merger and especially because it brought the city together in one spot. Yes, we are wildcats, but are we, but in some cases we're Bethel wildcats and we're Royalton wildcats. We need to be wildcats all the way through. So it's another aspect of it that <clears throat> can be presented. And I, I know the people who had the hardest time with merging the schools were the parents and the teachers. The kids were absolutely fine with it. They had no issues with it. They learned how to ride us on school buses because prior to that they were walking to school. So there was a fear of school buses and all of this stuff. So as I said, the adults had a harder time with it than the kids did. Now I'll be quiet. Rodney or Ed, do you guys want to come up? Well, I guess, uh, I mean, I can see the advantages, that's for sure. I mean, it just seems like it'd be more efficient. But I think there will be a lot of resistance from the ones that have to travel. And, and it is quite a ways to go from here to Bethel every day if you got elementary kids. But uh, I, I would have to leave it, you know, you, you got to leave it up to the Royal... The, the, the residents of Royalton to decide if they want to travel or not, and, and if it's worth the efficiencies that we would gain. So, yeah, I'm okay with putting a study committee in, but I wouldn't want to dive too hard into it and, and just see what the majority thinks. So, because I do feel it would be more efficient, but I don't know if. Uh, you know, the extra travel and whatnot that some people would have to do would warrant it. Ed? I do know that there was a lot of fuss when the unification happened. And uh, I don't know that I really want to set that off again. <laughs> um, I can't really see a problem with looking at anything and evaluating anything to see if the needs have changed or what the constituency thinks has changed. Um, if all we're talking about at this point is putting our feelers out and finding out if this is what the towns want, I don't really hate that. I mean, is it is is our time better used somewhere else? Maybe, but if, if we can't find somewhere else, I mean, this is one of our our tasks. So, um, you know, if, if we get wind that, that, that they've changed what they want, we should maybe look at it. Uh, I personally like the way the system as it is now, but uh, my responsibility is to some people who, who may not. So uh, I'm willing to look at anything, I believe. Is there an opportunity maybe for us to reword what this study would be instead of the main focus being looking at potentially moving two campuses of elementary to one? Could it just be more of a study into our school infrastructure and seeing what's working, what's not? Elementary could be a piece of that because, you know, we've also talked about is sixth grade working for middle school, right? I mean, 
it, it, you know, we, we're one of the only schools that have sixth grade middle schools, and it's challenging because, you know, like just on sports level, if we go to compete with another team around here, they don't have sixth graders on their teams. Then we've also had the issues where, like we had to solve um, earlier this year, where we didn't even know that there was a piece of Cal Ripken baseball that didn't get covered in middle school, and those kids were getting lost in between fifth grade and seventh grade. So <clears throat> I just wonder if, I, I think if, if I hear um, what you were asking was more of a doing an internal study, moving a little bit farther on to what, what could this look like, the pros and cons more in depth, then bringing that back to the, to the board, uh, just, you know, to see if we want to go forward further with that. Um, but I just wonder if we could just word the study in a matter that, I mean, there's always going to be people in the community that's going to hate change, and usually they're the ones that speak up first, right? They're the ones that are going to call you. I mean, just because four people called you doesn't mean that everybody in the community is against it or for it or whatever. Um, I just wonder if somehow we can, whatever this study group ends up being called, if we can call it something more general terms, yeah, we're looking at the elementary. That's one piece of several things we're looking at. Um, you know, could we maybe title it more, you know, could, just going back and seeing, you know, did all the merger pieces really come together the way we thought they were going to come together? Are they working like, like Ed was saying, are they working the way we thought they were working? Or maybe we're going to surprise ourselves and find out there are some things that aren't working for us. Um, I think anytime you throw something against the wall, there's going to be people in the community that's going to be upset one way or another. So, um, but I just wonder if there's a way of moving this forward, maybe a little quieter or a more different wording on it. Because um, I think I do think there's more to it than just the elementary piece. I think that we need to look at. Um, but I, I, again, I, I don't see what the um, what the big deal is in studying something. Um, yeah, know. As Chris was just talking, I, I had a thought. Uh, how long ago was it that, that we did the merger? It was a couple of years at this point, correct? 2018. Okay, so, I mean, at this point, shouldn't we be taking a look four or five years afterwards and assessing what worked what didn't and i mean it, it it's not it's not that crazy to me that we should be taking a look back about this time and evaluating how well it worked you know for for everybody that that is truth the truth a lot of money and and a lot of things were were involved uh, taking a, a look back at least a cursory look back I don't think is that bad of an idea just to make sure that everybody is happy with, with what they got. And, and if they are, I say we leave it alone. And, and if they're not, then we, we talk further. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I would be more favorable towards that kind of framing of, you know, five years on from the merger, how we're, how we're like, what are people's thoughts on how we're doing? And, you know, part of that could be a question of, you know, do you, of like, are, would people support a unified elementary school or changing the middle school structure or something like that? There could be multiple questions. Yeah, right. I, think, I, think yeah. I could go along with that totally too. I like yeah. that idea of, you know, it's time, you know, it's five years in, let's. Yeah, what, what could be changed in the future and yeah. what's going good and what. Could be I better. Think, hey, people hate change, but uh, some people are okay with customer surveys. So they'll tell you what they think. If you if if you just tell them we're evaluating, it it's a, a gentler touch than hey we're trying to change something, uh, and we do need to we do need to know before we could change. So it, we're being truthful in that we're saying we want to know how we're doing, uh, and that change is not a necessary component, uh, but. The, the knowing is we need to know 
we need to know if something does need to change. So have it framed like that, that, that we want to know because we do want to know that's, that's the whole gist of this. Yeah. We don't want to change anything if it's not going to be better. So do, I mean, do we feel that that might be the better pro I mean, would we still get accomplished what we, yeah, I think so. Out, I still would suggest we, we, have we think about a committee. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think you'd need a committee to come up with whatever the survey is yeah. and send it out. And then, I mean, I think, you know, there's always a tension between, you know, just getting community feedback and, you know, we also have expert educators who, you know, it's their job to do this kind of stuff. And so, like, how much do we weigh the community versus, like, what the professionals say, you know? Um, but I think... Uh, it would be great to do a survey, I think is kind of somewhat open-ended survey of like, it's been five years since the merger. How do people think we're doing on a broad range of things like communication with the community, you know, and engagement. And, and then based on that survey then we could put that to a committee to examine the survey. Is that where you're kind of thinking? And then based upon the comments well, that yeah, would come I mean, back then we would dive a little deeper into that? Is that? I think the committee would get the feedback back and then bring it back to the board and then we decide you know is there something we the want committee to could help synthesize it right so who would who would develop I'm sorry who would develop the questionnaire that we would put a committee together to do the questionnaire or is that something that we would do ourselves committee for the committee would put together the questionnaire okay you know because we want to have staff in sure you know Board. Yeah, what I was sort of thinking is this could, to flesh the rest of this out, could be possibly a really good retreat topic, right? Because it is visioning for the future. So as a retreat, you could really dig into this, like, we could backwards design it, mm -hmm. right? Like, we could say, where do we want to get to in regards to the information, right? Like, and say, what are all the steps we need to take to get there and even build out a timeline? Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds like a plan. So we'll... Is that making, am I making sense? Yeah, no, I think that that's a great idea. That this could be, that a plan for five year review can be one of the retreat things. And, you know, some of that might be we come up with some things to do, or it could be, you know, like, Makes we're going to design the committee and get these people to come, and then this is the outcome we, we're looking for. Okay. Oh, I All did right. have a, a question. Um, Maybe, Andre, you already said who it was, but, and I missed it. So um, this piece of paper, um, who were these people that shared these concerns? What was your? We surveyed all the staff. Okay, so staff. Yeah, thank yeah we have not gone out today. No, just, just people who are on the email list mm. or show up to our staff meetings. <laughs> okay. It'd be interesting to see what the you know, say the staff versus the students versus the parents would look, you know, how, how many of those items would be on a pro for both or a con yeah. for both or, or different things yeah. that would pop Especially up. Especially students. I think it would be really great to, yeah. to get students. That would be there. neat to maybe if you could do the, this questionnaire is, you know, like that is give it to the three sample populations to see what, what uh, that information comes back because yeah. typically if you just send it out who's going to fill it out probably mom or dad most of the time right yeah and not so much the teachers or the kids will get a, a say in it so might be interested to be able to can we can we go ahead in school and just put a questionnaire out for the i think we wait group or? well i would say this was specific to unified middle high school campus and elementary i think have the committee design surveys yeah. for each group yeah that would be neat yeah. to have yeah, and you know, if we could do a survey of alumni too, for the people who have graduated from people that over the last five years or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's good. Um, okay, uh, so we'll have that as a subject at the board retreat for tonight. We'll move on to the capital reserve fund request. Basketball court. Jeff, this is your idea. Yes. Vision. So, you know, we years ago we put basketball courts on the um, parking lot area, just some old, old kind of basketball hoops, and a lot of people use those. 
through the days and they've been bent. One just broke this summer with a tree from the storm and um, I thought, you know, kids would maybe use that more often if it was a better court. And so I looked into getting a, a quote for like, it's about 20,000 with the lines painted on there. Blacktop gave a quote of getting rid of that pavement that's there because it's not a you know, grade for basketball courts. And then um, Vermont Tennis Court would paint the lines. And I was thinking maybe putting some pickleball courts in there as well. So it would be a half court, three on three, four on four, half court court that is kind of at the end of the um, um, driveway out there. And I just think there might be an interest in, in some use for that. I see, it's funny, I was down here this weekend setting up for a Brave Challenge event on Sunday and there, there was like six or eight people out in the parking lot riding their bikes. <laughs> I just think that's so funny, you know? Yeah, like kids used to just go on their dirt roads and now they have to come to a paved area to ride, so it was good that they're using that. So, so Tara has the quote. This is just the blacktop quote right. that I have. I don't have right, the, uh, Vermont paint. Tennis Court. Yeah. So if this is something the board is willing to allow for use of funds, we can do an up to dollar amount so that it includes the work from Vermont Tennis Courts. And we could also just take this up next month too. Yeah. That's why it says action slash passable action. Yeah. It doesn't have to be tonight. Yeah, because right now it's eighteen five is the black top. Well at this point by the time you you do it, we're gonna be into snow time anyways, but, right? Yeah. So it'd be spring that they are available. I, I know up. um um, when I got on the board um, under the um, facility um, committee there, I had I'd gone out in one piece. I I talked to each each custodial staff in each school to find out, you know, what are things that aren't covered under the budget that they need going forward. And and then I had talked to our athletic director at that time. And one thing that was brought up by the athletic director at that time was. Uh, some type of uh, more structured um, multi-purpose court at each campus so um, here in in Bethel because both of them get usage but they're both in a parking lot <laughs> so they're they're not very safe um, so that you know the idea was maybe long term was how do we build into a budget or um, or look into a grant if there's something out there about building a multi-purpose court at, at each school um, so if so if we did something here at the high school with that that area would that take away the parking in that area or how no, no Vermont tennis court was going to put like a resurface like you see on some of the outdoor courts like at Woodstock rec there and they said because we'd be paving or would be plowing through that mm -hmm. but they wouldn't do that surface but it's a tighter surface that the concrete would go on, or that blacktop would be, than what's out in the parking lot. Right now, it's like kind of cracky. I guess, so my question is right now, the way it's constructed right now, we have the hoops there on the side of the parking lot. Yeah. So it would be constructed relatively similar. We're just going to resurface what's there? Well, yeah, resurface. And at, it'd be at the end, like you're heading towards the um, baseball field, right at the end there, kind of in that corner to the right. But like a full court with not a full court, just a half. So court. just a half court. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I guess to not to say fair, but just because it was something we had talked about in the past, um, would it be feasible if we were going to do one here that we could do something similar at the middle school campus as well? Because the the hoop there is rather outdated, and then again you have you basically the same issues are there yeah and you'll go by on like a saturday or whatever and there's one or two our, our kids out there playing basketball our last board meeting there was two, three uh, and, kids you know it's pretty yeah. it's pretty old <laughs> you know it, it probably needs a little bit you know it needs a you know a new backboard and rim and you know it's got some things that need to be done there but i just wonder if we're going to do one can we could we do you have money in the reserve fund right like it's really just deciding how you want to prioritize that i mean there's definitely there's money there to do both yeah, and it seems like this would be a good. I I do think if they would get used, so mm. yeah, it'd be good. Um, I think it's a really good idea, both locations. That is something that's important to the kids, and it's a lot of community use in both locations. So the drainage stuff that we had way back when was there going to have to be anything done with the parking lot? 
for that. Nothing done with the actual parking lot. We okay. are going to have to put in, um, it's like a holding pond essentially, mm, to the water pond. Yeah, to the, at the end of the parking lot to the right. Okay. That's finally just about finished in regards to permitting, and then we'll have to go out to bid in the spring to get a sense of what that's going to actually cost. To so it'll be right after the parking lot. It'll be after the parking lot to the left. So we're going to do a catchment. So. This is about um, water runoff. There was some permitting issues when there was the addition. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we've been approved for is that we would do a catchment at the end of that parking lot. So you, you're at the high school parking lot. We will catch the water runoff off of that parking lot and then it will go down and be directed into a catch basin that's right at the end on the left opposite of where Jeff's talking about for the basketball court in front of like the sugar house area mm -hmm. it'll go in there and then it will float down into the brook right next to it and then it will run down into the White River and that was good as long as we did that that covered the gym construction right um, and then there's also the um, practice space, performance space uh, project that... You mean that expansion, performance yeah. arts lab? So Jeff just reached out to that group to find out um, in regards to where they're at with fundraising uh, to see if we would have any offsetting revenue. Jeff, you just reached out yeah, today, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. we'll see what yeah. that group says, the music booster group right. that was working. I mean, I guess my question would be, like, if we resurface this and then that, that would not impact that okay. no yeah like if if that part of it was redoing no. that no. no that we never discussed the driveway over there so if we if, if we would resurface paint paint lines for either basketball slash pickleball or I love the know, pickleball combination idea. Or, yeah, yeah. Idea and then would we be looking at new um like hardware for i mean the the hoops Behind us, that way the hoops, the hoops that are out there now, you know, I'm just gonna cut care. all but one down because I yeah. don't know how safe they are really. So, so it probably needs a new backboard and rim. Right, we'd have to get a new basket. potentially a new yeah. setup yeah. there. So, yeah. so pretty much whatever we did at one campus would probably be similar cost yeah. at the other right. campus, right? I, I think that would be great, and and it might be something that that could be implemented right in the spring, right? I mean, right now, by the time you bid it, you're probably not gonna find anybody this time of year. No, wants to Blacktop said they weren't available until spring. Yeah. yeah. They said they would come right as soon, as soon as school ended, graduation the next day, they'd be here. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, and so then they'd, they'd come back the, the following year and they have, yeah. Or they can use it in summertime. Yeah. I do think um, looking at the possibility of pickleball at each, um, two painting those lines, I do think we could get a lot of community use uh, via pickleball. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, there used to be tennis courts on this right, campus, right? right? Yep. Yeah, right That's how I learned how to play. Yeah, That's where my forehand's good. Jeez. <laughs> For those of the, it's a joke. I'm not great with. <laughs> I haven't seen you at Wimbledon. So. <laughs> well, it didn't work cool. out so well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do we feel that the two locations that we have are suitable locations? that won't impact other things like parking or safety or, you know. Are you talking right where the other one is, Chris? That back basket well, I'm just, I'm just, out there? Yeah, I'm just but talking based yeah. upon the one <laughs> the one here at the high school and then the one at the middle school. Mm, like, so. do we feel that they're in a safe, right. accessible mm -hmm. area or would they, well, while we're there's... doing it, if we're gonna tear a hoop down, like if we move it to another section in the parking lot, it might be safer or something? Well, or, the middle school one, I mean, when they're out there shooting hoop, sometimes cars that are parked right there are kind of in Bobble. danger. Yeah. <laughs> now there used to be, I don't even know if it's still out there, there used to be a little court um, out behind the gym at the middle there school. There still is. And, still we re and we redid it last summer. Because I never see, well I'm not there now, but I never I would never see the kids going out there to use that one. I'd see them going out into the parking lot using right. the one there. The um, one out back is used more for like more recess by the and elementary after school recess. Yeah. type. Yeah. There's but definitely I mean, a like larger conversation that can be had about investing in the middle school specific 
playground, for lack of a better word, rec area. Uh, they use equipment differently. Currently, yeah. um, they're looking at constraints with construction that's going on. We have a field, we have some equipment, and there are parallel conversations happening. There's some uh, community grant money that is that can be earmarked for uh, additional resources. I think I love the idea of parity. I champion that. I love the idea of having that court, which does get used often, moved maybe more towards the greenhouse out of the main flow of traffic, so an eye towards safety, mm. but also how it ties into a larger project of how do we make that a middle school specific space. Yeah, I think that's... So I would welcome yeah, that. Uh, like I said, there are several parallel conversations happening. We recognize it's a need. Um, and. I love the idea of parity. I love the idea of making it a safer opportunity. And I hear your point about if it's in the back, are we attracting community members? As opposed to if it's by that crown jewel of a greenhouse and is kind of the entrance into a middle school specific area. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I think there's a that's an exciting conversation. I think we put this on the agenda for the next task facility task force. Well, I was going to say, right it, it sounds like maybe yeah. the task committee could help move that forward um, with some help. Yeah, since there's no rush on this, since it's not going to happen for... Uh, yeah, except they might get booked. Yeah, I know. True, true. <laughs> yeah. And we definitely would welcome Jeff to be a part of those discussions with our task committee if you yeah, mean yeah, you've yeah. done some of the legwork yeah. already. Sure. But we, I think now we've got it set up so we'll meet the day prior to your meetings. So this could be a big chunk of the agenda, possibly, next time. So mm -hmm. I think we could be ready to move on this sooner rather than later. Yeah, and I like the idea of uh, both campuses kind of looking at it holistically with rather than just like, well, we had this parking area and we could just minimally pave over this. Yeah. And, you know, like maybe that's what we wind up going with, but it would be good to kind of know, like, the pie in the sky, like what would we have for facilities, right. here, you know. Um, Ed? I just want to make sure I heard Jamie right <clears throat> earlier. At this point, we could probably, I'll say probably, do this at both campuses as we stand now, is what you said, right? Financially? <laughs> well, we have one point three million. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got money put into reserve to <laughs> start to take on some of these type of projects. Yep. Okay. It's one of the most important things to me, that if we can financially do it at both, I'm interested in talking more about both. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, I mean, that's where kind of having that roadmap of what facilities work other than this we're going to be doing so that we can plan that stuff out. You know where this fits in terms of that as well would be helpful. Agreed. Okay. Uh, I think we've got plans to move forward on that. Um then we're on to public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay. New hires and resignations. Oh, go ahead, Emily. I almost missed you there. Um. I was just wondering if there is, uh, I don't know if anyone saw my note in the chat, but is there a summary of those survey results available anywhere that like we could see? Yeah, um, yeah, we get that. I didn't see it in the principal's report. That's why I was just- We'll, we'll, we'll make, good. yeah. It's because it was completed late after it was all put together. We'll add it to the folder, Emily. Okay, thank you. Cause I know there were some, some deep concerns at the middle school and I'm not sure they were like fully reflected there. So I just want to make sure that's, just want to take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other public comments? Uh, the new hires and resignations. I think we have any. No, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we have any other. Um, future agenda items will have finalizing the 
retreat agenda. Um, You're going to have your first academic data right. report. And then a further discussion on um, outdoor athletic facilities. Draft one of your student support budget next meeting. It's going to be a fun meeting. Okay. That's stuff. Start to get in the thick of it. Yeah. All right. Our next meeting is Tuesday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Bethel campus. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. And what day? Seconded. Did we come up with a date on the retreat? I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna send you guys uh, either the 19th or 20th, and we'll see. Where we'll All right, thanks everybody. We adjourn at 8:20. So if you're like me, I'm gonna block out both. Of them.